Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy back as always with a brand new top 10 list. And this list was a request from one of my subscribers, Rachel Moran, who asked me to do a top 10 list of TV shows that have overstayed their welcome. These are shows that we loved at first, but after years of them going on and on and a decline in quality, we kind of feel like these shows have ran their course and just need to be ended. The plug needs to be pulled with these shows. Oh, and I forgot to mention that for this top 10 list and for the one next week, I'll be resorting back to my old top 10 style from before as I feel like a visual aid isn't necessary to explain why I feel like this show has overstayed its welcome or for the other top 10 that will be coming back. But I promise you, the new style is here to stay but for these two, it's just not necessary. And of course, before we get to prime time, I do have a couple honorable or dishonorable, I, I don't know what to categorize them, but mentions that didn't make it on the list. Starting off with South Park, Survivor, That 70s Show, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, and The Office. And now, enjoy the show. You know, it seems today that all we see is violence in movies and sex on TV with my number 10 choice, Family Guy. Now, I was a huge fan of Family Guy when it first came out in the early 2000s. I was a mega fan, like most people. But after a while, the jokes got really repetitive or they just went on for way too long and it just wasn't as funny or clever as it was in the earlier seasons. And given the obvious fact that Seth MacFarlane, the original creator and voice of many of the characters in the show, has stated time and time again that he wishes the show would get cancelled and has moved on to other projects like other TV shows and movies, his disinterest proves that this show has run its course and it's just not as fun as it was in the earlier years. Live from New York is my number 9 choice, Saturday Night Live! Now, Saturday Night Live has been a staple of television comedy ever since it premiered back in 1975, and it opened the door for so many comedians and comedic writers. But as of late, their material has been rather subpar to weak. There's not a lot of memorable skits like there were in the early 70s, 80s, and 90s. Hell, even in the early 2000s, there are like maybe one or two skits that I kind of remembered, but it's just not as funny or as interesting as it was back in the day and a lot of people have been saying for years man SNL just needs stuff and it doesn't matter how many famous guest hosts you get or what band will be playing or what new cast member is joining the fact remains that SNL has not been hilariously funny since maybe 2003 that's the last time I could honestly say that it was funny. But to be a bit contradictory here, I would actually be kind of hurt if they canceled SNL as it did serve as a doorway for many aspiring comedians and comedic writers. If that is taken away, a lot of these comedic writers and talent probably would never get the opportunity to showcase their skills. And that's why SNL exists in the first place. But at the same time, I feel like their talent is sort of wasted on a show that just doesn't have a leg to stand on anymore. Men, 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 manly men. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Men, 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 number eight, eight is two and a half men. Let's be perfectly honest here. This show should have been canceled way before Charlie Sheen's departure as the entire premise and basis for the show had ran its course by season six. I mean, the show is called Two and a Half Men about these two guys raising a little boy. Well, that little boy is not a little boy anymore. He is a grown teenager slash adult. So it's not even two and a half men anymore. It's just three dudes. And the fact that they even tried to keep the show going after Charlie Sheen left just came off as very desperate and pathetic. It's like beating a dead horse while you're jumping the shark. And the addition of Ashton Kutcher to the show did not help to fill the void left by Charlie Sheen, no matter how much of a womanizer you make his character. Luckily for us, after maybe two or three seasons, I'm not sure, I stopped watching after Charlie Sheen left, they canceled the show. And it's just a damn shame. It could have ended on a high note, but instead it went out with a whimper. And speaking of shows that went out on a whimper, <laughs> we got my number seven choice. Scrubs. This one hurt me the most because I was a huge 
fan of this show, and I felt like it deserved a better send-off than the one it got, with nobody giving a fuck about it. The show was excellent up to season 7 with its brilliant mix of comedy and drama, one not overpowering the other, lovable and memorable characters, even though some of them may be complete douchebags, you kind of understand and relate to them as they were very well developed, and some really interesting stories. But that all changed when JD, or at least the actor who played JD, did the same thing Charlie Sheen did and fucking left the show and left everybody hanging so they're wondering, oh shit, what do we do now? Let's keep the show going even though we don't have the main character. Now let's throw all these new characters. Three new characters came into season 8 and I'm like, they're not as interesting. The jokes just didn't land like they used to. It just lost its charm and essence that made the show good to begin with. And with it floating around from network to network, finally landing in ABC, a lot of people just straight up forgot about Scrubs and it faded into obscurity with nobody watching its final season and its series finale. And I personally felt like the show deserved a better send off than that. But I can't deny that it did overstay its welcome as it should have ended with the episode My Finale when JD actually left. But decided, no, let's keep on trucking, we'll keep going. No, you should have just ended it right there. Know when to quit. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea and needs to get evicted from that house? Well, that would be my number six choice. Spongebob Squarepants. Now, I was a uber fan of this show back in the day, but even back then, as a kid, I started to notice a slow but steady decline in quality when it came to latter episodes of Spongebob. And considering that the original team that made the first few seasons left and the series creator left the show as the showrunner and just stuck around as executive producer, I knew Spongebob was heading down a path of no return and literally jumped the shark. Can you even jump a shark in the water? I, I guess went around the shark as most of the jokes became extremely kiddish. Like in the previous seasons, they had a good mix of both kid humor and adult humor. Jokes that adults would really love and would go over kids' heads. Now it's shifted focus and just focus more on telling very kiddish, very sophomore jokes where SpongeBob and Patrick would just act really silly or do something silly, do something really stupid. And SpongeBob and Patrick's gay tendencies only got worse as the series progressed. Not to say that I would have a problem if SpongeBob and Patrick were gay, but the whole point of SpongeBob and Patrick's relationship was to show the strength in friendship. But it just didn't come off as that as they were acting really, really flamboyant in some of these later episodes. And all the characters weren't as interesting or as fun as in the previous seasons. It just lost a sort of charm after all the original staff left. And remember guys, this is coming from a mega fan of Spongebob. Even I admit that it's become tired and repetitive and the show just needs to end. Spongebob as an uber fan of yours back in the day. You know I'm not being biased here, buddy. You just need to go now. The, the generation that grew up with you, they're all grown up. We don't need you anymore. Let's make way for some new original ideas. You were original for your time, but now you just played out, man. Just, just go home. Go home, lock the door, play with Gary, don't come out again. A show that should have been canceled after its first episode is my number five choice, Keeping Up With The Shidashians, because I'm not gonna call them by their real name. I don't know why this show is still going on right now. Why? Do people even give a shit about these people? These are a bunch of shitty, spoiled little brats who live very pampered lives and treats everybody like shit and gets into some pointless drama that isn't interesting whatsoever. Why do people watch this? There are so many better things to watch on TV, on Netflix, on YouTube, and we're gonna be giving these people the time of day? It just makes no sense to me. I watched one episode one episode of this show and I'm like, the fuck is this? Why am I watching this? I was just making fun of them as the episode was going on, by the way, because I'm like, this is just terrible. Why do I even care about their little shitty dilemmas? I have my own issues to worry about. And I guess 
That's why people love watching them. They love to see other people's misery and it makes them feel good about themselves. But does it really make you feel good to know that these people are rich as fuck for doing nothing at all besides being on TV? That doesn't make me feel good. That makes me wonder, why do I live in a fucking box and they live in a freaking mansion? My pinky is far more interesting and likable than any of the shit Dashians will ever be. And I just don't want to talk about this show anymore. The fact that I'm even talking about it makes me feel ill because I'm kind of like promoting the show. The fact that I even mentioned it. it the show just needs to be canceled. It has ran its course. We all seen all the shit that they have gone into. We don't need to see anymore. Let's move on, America. And speaking of America, we got my number four choice, American Idol. Now, when American Idol first premiered, it was such a refreshing and interesting concept for a show, shining the spotlight on some hidden talent here in America, and actually gave us some great singers in the process, like Kelly Clarkson and Carrie Underwood, Fantasia, Ruben Stein. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe not him. Clay Ake, no, not him either. Not to mention providing us with some of the most memorable and hilarious auditions. I mean, William Hung, she bangs, she bangs, or that black guy looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. We would have never gotten any of those moments had it not been for American Idol. And I actually find it kind of ironic in a funny way that we remember these terrible people compared to all the great singers that have been a part of American Idol. I can't even name the last three winners in the past few years, but I remember William Hung and I remember the black guy. They were just so memorable. But like most of the shows on this list, the gimmicks started to wear thin after maybe the sixth American Idol. After that, people started just not tuning in and it's just not as interesting of a concept as it was in the earlier years. It was refreshing, it was new, but now it just seems so commonplace and uninteresting. Hell, some of the new American Idols, they don't even go on to do anything special. And that's all that needs to be said about the show. It was a trendsetter for its time that paved the way for all other reality TV shows after it, but has ran its course, all the original judges have left, and honestly, it just can't compete in this really tough reality TV music market compared to The Voice or X Factor. It just can't compare anymore. It just needs to be put to pastures and laid to rest. And I heard that they are kind of canceling it either this year or next year. I'm not too sure because I stopped watching like seven years ago. And I honestly think it should have been canceled back then rather than now when nobody gives a shit about it. By George, I think I solved the case for my number three choice case close. 600 episodes in and we're not even close to finding out who the men in black are that turn Detective Conan into a little child. 600 episodes! Oh my god, it's just so tiresome. I just want them to get to the freaking point already. I want him to find the men in black and turn back into the detective we all know and love. Sure, the concept is still interesting and there are some interesting dilemmas and interesting cases and crimes that he does solve. But after 600 episodes, you kind of just get really tired and you're like, oh yeah, he's just gonna solve this case again. I want it to end where he finds them out, finds the men in black, and then we can put the show to rest. Because it's a great show, but it's just, it's been going on for way too long and I'm starting to get really sick and tired of it. Still trying to catch them all is my number two choice. Pokemon. Hell, even when I was a kid, I felt like this show overstayed its welcome. After the end of Pokemon Master Quest and the original team being disbanded and just Ash and Brock teaming up with like the most random girl each and every new series, I was just sick and tired of Pokemon. I was sick and tired of them going on this adventure, collecting the badges, Ash finally gets to like the Elite Four, but then loses the final battle, and then he just has to continue to become the next Pokemon Master. How is he not a Pokemon Master after how many years of him doing the same shit? The idea, concept, story, characters, and even the Pokemons themselves have been worn thin. There's just no more to take from Pokemon that they haven't already done. And sometimes I feel like they're just recycling the same shit over and over again. And they've ran out of ideas for Pokemon. Hell, there's one Pokemon that is literally an ice cream cone. An ice cream cone. Wow. Props on creativity, guys. Pokemon was a great show for its time, 
but it needs to just end now. It, it really does. And now here we are at my number one choice. I'm pretty sure you all know what number one is, so let's not even beat around the bush. Number one is The Simpsons. Everybody complains about the fact that The Simpsons are still going on and still shooting out new episodes when it should have ended back in the late 90s or even the early 2000s. People are just waiting for the show to end and wondering when is the day gonna come when they're finally going to cancel or end The Simpsons. We're really, really tired of them. And keep in mind, I'm a huge fan. Like, I have most of the first few seasons of The Simpsons on DVD, at least the first 10 seasons, and I loved it. It was funny, it was satirical, had really great characters, some really touching stories. It was a great show. Emphasis on was. But now the characters, material, the jokes, the stories, they all just seem so worn out, played out, and just lacking of the charm from all the previous seasons. But the big problem with this is as they continue to make new episodes and get renewed for new seasons, they are tarnishing what little they have of their lasting legacy, being a pioneer for animation and television, being the first ever primetime animated show after the Flintstones, and kind of rejuvenating Fox in the early 90s, and paving the way for so many other shows like South Park, Family Guy, Bob Burgers, Future Futurama, it wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for The Simpsons. And we want to remember them and cherish them for all the good times they had, but we can't do that because all we have in our minds is, oh god, they have another episode? Oh, Bart did this? And that's why The Simpsons is the number one show that has overstayed their welcome. And those, ladies and gentlemen, were my top 10 shows that have overstayed their welcome. And I would love to know what you guys thought about my list. Did you agree with it? Did you disagree with it? Did you feel like I left any shows out that have overstayed their welcome? And let me know what is a show that you personally feel like has overstayed its welcome. Comment below and let me know. And stay tuned, tomorrow I have an anime review that should have been out yesterday, but <sighs> it's just daunting to sit through, guys. I promise it's coming out tomorrow, and I do plan to review Ant-Man on Friday, and a new top 10 list will be coming next Wednesday. So until then, guys, if you'd like to be a part of the Black Critter Crew and not miss out on a single awesome video on this channel, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Watt II, the Black Critter Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube!